So my friend, if you were just over at uh, my personal page, that's where we accidentally started the show. So now we're here on my business page, uh, which is inviting you know a couple hundred thousand people to join in. So Kelsey, always fun with a live show. All good, all good. So being mindful of time, it's now 839 in the West. We want to jump right into the show uh, as all of our drifters and friends are joining us here uh, on the show. David, we want to talk about unemployment. We want to talk about the economy. We want to talk about what the biggest economists are saying. And as always, we want to talk about what's going on in housing. So I think we should go right to the deck and right. let's get into what are some of the most important data points our clients need to know and need to understand so they can be the educator and win over the hearts and minds of more buyers and sellers. So Absolutely. David, take it away. Let's talk about let's talk about unemployment. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the biggest story this morning. You know, the, the uh, research team at KCM has been working hard this morning since it came out, you know, 830 here on the East Coast now, you know, just a few yeah. hours later uh, about unemployment. And, and so we've got all of that for you. And, and I'll share that here. And, you know, I want to do a little bit of a recap because we've been talking about this, uh, you know, since we started this really in, uh, you know, in March and then into April and, and start with this complete look at unemployment. Now, uh, we've talked about this and the nature of, of this information, you know, using the data with care and, and, and being mindful that these are real people that are affected in, in real situations. And, um, you know, if we look at this orange bar right here, 55 million people at this point have filed for unemployment benefits. Um, now, the blue uh, bar there that, that you see shows those are currently collecting unemployment. Now, even this week, I've been uh, tagged in different posts and things that, uh, you know, have been and put out there where somebody says there are over 50 million people that are currently unemployed right now. And, and, and certainly gives us perspective, one, that that's not the, the actual fact of who's unemployed right now, but, but, but it helps us able to kind of see where people are at. And, you know, right now with 16.1 million people still collecting unemployment, I'm not making a case that that's a good thing. It's far too many. If one person doesn't uh, have employment that wants it or one family is impacted, that's too many. So we want to see that, that number continue to come down. You know, the big story this morning uh, is that 1.8 million jobs were gained uh, in, uh, in the last month in uh, the unemployment report. The, the large majority of those coming again from leisure and hospitality, 592,000 jobs in that category. The overwhelming majority, just over 500,000 of those are people in the, in the restaurant business. You know, we talked extensively about this being a service sector led uh, economic downturn. You can start to see uh, across the line items there. I won't go through each one of where jobs are coming back slightly ahead of what forecasters, um, you know, were saying that they would like to see. But, uh, you know, I think the, the uh, reaction to this jobs report has probably been uh, lukewarm by, by commentators. I don't see anybody jumping up and down and going, this is amazing, but we are heading in the right direction. We just need to see, see more of it. The yeah, unemployment... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, before you, let's go back to that slide just for a second. And, and, you know, Jason and myself, so Jason, I want your comments here as well. Yeah. What I want to stress to everybody right now is, again, you know, we want to, we want to help unfreeze the market mm -hmm. of sellers that are concerned that know that they can sell their home for a premium, know that they can get the lowest interest rate that they probably ever heard of. And yet they're concerned to make the move because they're uncertain about the economy. They're uncertain about unemployment. They're uncertain about how you're gonna help them get into the next home. When I see this and knowing that this just came out, this is a video you should shoot today. This yep. is something you should talk about today on Facebook, today on Instagram Live. You should post this to LinkedIn and ask for, hey, is anyone else excited to see that 592,000 people in leisure and hospitality have regained their jobs? I'm so happy for every one of them. And David, I love your point. Hey, we had 55 million people file. We still have too many people that are unemployed. If one person is unemployed today that wants to work, that's too many. Yeah. And yet, I'm thrilled to see that our economy, we picked up 1.8 million. Jason, thoughts on that before he shows the yeah, next slide? I, I almost got a picture of the, whenever you get a LinkedIn reminder that congratulates somebody on a work, work anniversary, someone's like, hey, we want to congratulate or celebrate right. 
1.8 million fellow Americans who are back to work right now. Give it a heart, give it a like. Um, good news. I mean, it's sharing good news right now, whether it's an Instagram post, an Instagram story, resharing KCM's post, screenshotting this and doing it, uh, making it a video, IGTV, doing, try a new Instagram reel, make this your first Instagram reel. Yep. But whatever you do, like this to me is worth celebrating and good news is good news right now. No so doubt. Use it up. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look over the last three months, we've seen about 9 million jobs come back after, right. you know, everything that we know it's happened. And it leads us to this, the, you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics published this morning, the unemployment rate at 10.2%. And, you know, the story there is we went up in March, we went, we jumped in April, and we've consistently come down since then. Now, what's important to, to kind of frame this right now is at 10.2%, we're really kind of in the upper bounds of where we were back in the Great Recession, you know, in, in the housing crisis. And we all certainly remember that. But just to put that into perspective, and Tom, I, I say that, and Jason, you know, a couple of months ago, we were talking about, you know, these, these dramatic headlines that do more to terrify than to clarify. And so, you know, this clarifying look, we want to continue to see this thing, you, you know, edge down and, and, and certainly are seeing that um, but it puts perspective into where, you know, where we sit right now uh, relative to unemployment. Absolutely. One of, the, one of the stories that we've talked about here uh, is the idea of core unemployment. Now, core unemployment takes permanent unemployment, keeps that, takes off to the side temporary unemployment because we expect those people to get their jobs back. And then it adds back in what is defined as marginally attached. And think about that as people that, that, that aren't looking for a job right now. And interestingly, we, we, we started to say, okay, we're starting to see core unemployment rise in this country. And, and we just saw that drop you know, by, by two tenths of a percentage in July. We're gonna continue to watch that. But hey, well, again, good news, we'll take a win where we can get it uh, in the unemployment story. But again, comparing this to uh, April of 2010, where in core unemployment, we're at about Ten and a half percent. We're still at a you know almost half of that, uh, and and ultimately good news relative to to where we sit going forward um, with unemployment in this country. David, would would you take just a moment and redefine core unemployment so people are clear on that? Sure, core unemployment. So so this is a debate really that's gone on forever of how do we measure unemployment in this country? And there are going to be people people that say we should do it this way, we should do it that way. So the unemployment rate that we talked about at 10.2%, just a slide ago, is temporary and permanent unemployment filings, okay? Those are people that are saying, hey, I lost my job for you know, a temporary moment, or this is, no, this is permanent. My job has gone away. Core unemployment um, is a factor of those that are permanently unemployed, then takes out, meaning removes, temporary unemployment because we're going to say, okay, those people aren't going to be long-term unemployed. They're going to get their jobs back at the point that, you know, the business can reopen or whatever the case may be, but then adds back in those that are, uh, you know, that haven't looked for a job. So that means those are what they call marginally unattached workers. And that rate right, right now in this country stands at 5.7%. So it, it, it really just, I show this to give you a perspective of what people may say in the market uh, relative to what's going on with unemployment. So before you go to the next slide, I'd like to, you know, for all my friends out there watching, first of all, happy Friday. Uh, if you were, again, if you were on my other page and you saw that we had to stop because we went to the wrong page and here we are on the right page, thank you for bouncing over with us. Um, before we go to the next slide, I really want to get some perspective. We have a lot of people watching right now. I see Michelle Goodridge, who I've known forever, uh, Marianne DeVita, one of our great coaches, Brent Woods. I'd love to know from everybody out there, how do you plan to use these slides? This is stuff that the second this show ends, in my opinion, you should take, you know, you know mykcm.com forward slash Tom Ferry, download all these slides. And you should start doing live shows immediately, in my opinion. But I want to know in the comments, what do you plan to do with just those first three or four slides? So, David, it always takes a second because we're live on Facebook. Yeah. Let's go into the next one. But I want to watch and see what the comments are. And I'll bring up the ones I think are critical. 
Absolutely. I'm going to show two other slides to give context here relative to that conversation. And, and, and the first one here is just the breakdown. We always want to give this to you. And, and this pie chart does such a good job of, of visually communicating nine out of 10 people right now are employed versus unemployed. And I think that that point of how we process this information, I want you to keep that in mind. And then the story of temporary versus unemployment uh, uh, you know, situations across this country as it continues to go down. Now we want to see that continue to decrease. But but the interesting thing is, you know, just uh, just a couple of months ago, we started talking about more depth, less length. We want to look at the depth, meaning the you, you know the, the the number of unemployment. Then we want to say how long. This graph continues to get uh, you know smaller relative to what's happening with unemployment, and really visually, if I you know if I were to mouse over here, brings in perspective to where we we sit with unemployment relative to the Great Recession. So, um, I, I think Tom, your point of being able to deliver this right now, deliver this to the to the market, uh, is what we what we absolutely need to do. Jason, when you see this slide, more depth, right? That when you look at that slide, what is the video in your mind, right? More depth, less length. How would you frame that video? What would you say? My initial thought is, I think about what my broker used to tell me when she trained me in the very beginning of my career. She would always say real estate's a long-term transaction. And I would say something in the video to the effect of, look at this chart, look at the years. Imagine you're living your life out over the next three to five years. What decisions are you making today? And where do you expect you're going to be in three to five years? Because real estate's a long-term decision. It's a lifestyle decision. Yes. And helping people frame the decision from now to where we think we're going in the next three to five years. And then saying, oh, you know what? Maybe it is a good time to get locked in at a monthly price. I mean, rates are so low. Maybe it is a good time to do that right now. Or maybe it's, you know what? We should wait. There their instincts may vary based upon their circumstances, but your job as an agent, as a knowledge broker, is simply to help people make informed choices. You talked about in our first live broadcast on the other page, you talked about like taking the emotion out of it, not because there is a place for emotion, but I always thought of myself when I was selling before I was just doing coaching. I always thought to myself, you know what? My job is to be that objective third party to help people make informed choices. So they can move forward powerfully based upon data and facts, or at least uh, forecasts. And I, that's what I would do. Where are you going to be in three to five years? Yeah. What decision do you need to make today to position yourself for that? Yeah. That's what comes off kind of- I love it. The and mind. the thing that keeps going through my mind, and again, you know, we got so many great people out there watching right now that are just you know, brilliant marketeers and now get to you know, bake and, and think about all these ideas. I think a lot about- um, the value of a home mm. and, and the perspective that I always want to drive home with people is, you know, look, you're watching right now, you're a rock star agent, you know, hey, search portals do their job, transaction coordination does their job. Your job is to help people decode the right decision, right? Yeah. That, you know, is this, is this home going to maximize joy and profit in my life now and forever, right? Like that's our real job. It's helping them figure out what do they truly want? And if somebody's stuck in the weeds right now saying, but the whole world's falling apart and the economy's falling apart, to be able to show them this slide and say, I hear you, but I, but I think you might be thinking we're over here or over here and not seeing where we're here. And, and regardless of maybe your opinion of that, is a home still important to you? Yeah. It's a place to raise your family still. So, I mean, I, then I would go to that emotional side. Tom, Absolutely. I, I think that point right there, I, I want to say this in the data and, and we're not going to, I'm not bringing this data in. It's one thing, truthfully, that I want to talk about at the summit. I don't, and I can tell you this with the data we've seen and you and Jason, feel free to disagree with me here. <laughs> There's never been a time in my lifetime in such a short period of time where the value of home has grown greater than the last four months. I, I mean, it's, it's Concur. shocking. Concur. It is shocking. I do too. The, the number of people that are saying, this is important to me. This is important to me. Yeah. Home ownership is critically important right now. Yeah. 
in, as as the epicenter of of our lives. Yes. Well, and, and it's even more than just the emotion. It's straight up the functionality of a home. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, people are being like, you know what? I need a home office. I need a pool. I need whatever they might need or want. Yeah. But the functionality of a home speaks volumes because our lives are lived out there every hour, every day right now. Yeah. So we're let's let's transition on this. I think people got the point. Let's talk about the economy because there's, yeah. you know, we, we know we're going to talk about the housing economy yeah. and it is. Thank goodness it is there. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about the overall economy. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about that. We, we, again, this is another topic we've talked about, you know, week in, week out. We, if you remember, we started with the slides talking about the V and the U and the W and the L and all those things. Swish. <laughs> Everything that's been talked about, you know, and, and it's, you know, it, it's such a short period of time relative to four or five months, but it feels like so long ago, you know, that, that we had these conversations. So I want to go back and, and remind you what we did talk about. So if you, if you if you still have those slides or you go back and get them at Keeping Current Matters, the, the Q2 forecast that was delivered, you know, the, the what the economist said, the average was we're going to see a dip of 30.8% in the second quarter. Now, what came in was 32.9%. They were very, very close in their forecast of that. And, uh, you know, so if we're going to look at them and, and, and believe them in that, we've got to look at those very same uh, analysts and forecasters for what are they saying here in the third quarter and, and beyond. And so we pulled the original five forecasters of what they're saying right now, an additional four. Uh, so nine really projections around what's happening economically speaking. And you can see here, I believe, you, you know, five of the nine are saying we're going to see over 20 percent growth here in the third quarter. The other is somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. So, you know, while we saw massive, massive decline in GDP in the second quarter, we're again going to see massive upswing in, in the third quarter. And I think uh, Morgan Stanley articulates it best here, and Lisa, their chief investment officer, says, indeed, the worst ever GDP reading could be followed by the best ever growth in the third quarter. So as we see those things in the rearview mirror, let's acknowledge, you know, the, the, the country literally shut down and we saw that in the, in the output. And, and yet, economically speaking, we're, you know, on the rebounding growth. Now, I'm not suggesting we're back where we need to be or that there aren't questions to be answered. There are, but economically speaking, we are recovering. Now, uh, David, last uh, two David, weeks ago, go ahead, Tom. Before you show that next slide, I want to just acknowledge the Oracle. I remember sitting with you and I on a mm -hmm. show with Steve Harney. I want to say it was maybe the first or second week in April. And he's, you know, Thomas, listen to me. I want you to imagine grabbing a tennis ball and throwing it as hard as you can against the ground. That is what the economy is going to look like in the Q in Q2. Slam yeah. that ball as hard as you can. He goes, but when you slam that tennis ball, what do you think happens next? And right. it's exactly what we're seeing. Right. Right now, Absolutely. maybe the numbers aren't going to even out where we ultimately want to be, but we're seeing that massive spike down, that massive spike up. And Lisa, you know, Chalet is saying it right here. The thing that we got to get everybody is you got to also go back and take those last three slides, show the all red, and then tell the story the way David did. Look, this is what the smartest economists were saying. The world is falling apart, but this is what they're saying about the third quarter. And right. you're already seeing it now with all the publicly traded companies coming out with their numbers. If you're paying attention, everybody, everybody is seeing this big, massive spike. So we want to not make it better than it is, not make it worse than it is, just talk about what is. Right. So David, show them that next one, because I think this yeah. map really yeah, drives I think it yeah, this next one, you know, we talked uh, two weeks ago just about the, the, the dip in consumer spending and then the, the trend back up upwards. And I brought this map in here that our team developed relative to a study uh, that shows consumer spending by state and in, in how far down it is right now as compared to January 1st. So, you know, the overwhelming majority is this kind of uh, darker, I don't know, orange brownish tint, which is between zero and 10%, you know, if I look at the middle of the country in Texas, down 7.4% off of January. Now, if you remember, we looked at this back in April or back in the slide we used two weeks ago, 
significant dip in consumer spending as people, I, I like to think about that, put their hands in their pockets that, you know, we all went into our homes and said, hey, we're going to, we're, we're going to wait this thing out for just a little while. But, but starting to get back to a consumer spending pattern that is very much like uh, how we started the year. And so I think we're going to, you know, we want to continue to watch consumers. We want to watch that map. And, and I would say, you know, if you go back to the quote, if you guys remember, we talked about it, the strength of recovery will be determined by containment of the virus. And I think that going forward will be the story regionally, meaning by state. Um, you know, how is your state being affected? What makes up your state's economy? That's going to affect recovery. You know, what's, what's going on with the virus? How are things happening? But it is really encouraging to see across the country to be within 10 points of where we were in January, based on what we've just been through in this, you know, this economic storm across the country. I agree. I I really love this. And, and, and you know, David, I'm going to say, if, if people are really paying attention, it's not like the economy in January and February was steamrolling and growing like crazy, right? We were actually a little timid in that first two months of the year, right? So then you put everything that happened on top of this. Right. I just can't help but feel maybe just, I'm, I'm going to say bullish, not mm -hmm. on every state in the union, but yeah. overall very bullish because you look at, again, all those people coming back that are in restaurants, in hotels. I was at dinner the last two nights. I went out to dinner for the first time in a long time, the last two nights. And yes, I was sitting in a parking lot in an open air setting in one, and I was sitting in an alley in the other. But you know what that tells me? Restaurant owners, hotel people, the service industry are becoming very resourceful. Right. That's what right. all. That's what we're asking of all of you. So just, just my two cents on that. Let's. Yeah, I think it's a great let's, point. Let's let's keep it going quickly and talk about housing recovery because everybody's going to want to see this and this is where get ready to start thinking how you're going to take this information and be the educator. Yeah. So so I had some fun with this visual. I'll show it to you guys because it's it's very interesting what economists are saying about the housing market right now. And, you, you know, I, I feel like it's like a, a movie review in some respects. And, and here's the reason I put this together. Economists don't normally speak like this. They, they, they talk very matter of fact, very much in the data, very much what's going on. And we're hearing things like an astonishing rebound, shockingly strong. You know, Adam Data Solutions says, pulled something of a, of a high wire act in the second quarter. Zillow came in with stared the pandemic right in the eye and hasn't blinked. There's been nothing short of remarkable, you know? So, you know, when I look at this, we could not have asked for, 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 for more and, and for better responses to what's happening right now in the housing market. And, and you know, if I were to, to, to kind, of, kind of look at this and say, you know, not only economically speaking, but in the housing market, I think it's safe to say um, we, we are far beyond where, uh, where most people had said, you know, this is where we would be at this time. I mean, Tom, you talked about it, you know, the surge in demand, and we've talked about pent-up demand, and we'll talk about that some more today, but, but I think we're seeing that the fruit of that in what, you know, what experts are saying about the housing market right now. Hey, Jason, I, I can't help but think that I want your opinion on this. Uh, nope. David said something earlier. Uh, headlines are designed to terrify not clarify. not clarify. And I think I saw you write that one down too, because I know <laughs> I did. I, I can't help but think if an agent just comes out and, and publishes this, it's probably going to feel pretty self-serving, mm -hmm. right? I think instead they should go back into go the, the articles. archives of April, May, and June when Wells Fargo and NAR and everybody was saying doom and gloom and then, you know, I'd, I'd lead with the doom and gloom and then this one and say, you know, something about housing. Dave, you know, Jason, thoughts. I'm, I'm a my little initial screwed up on this is, one, but I, I know I don't want just this. Yeah. No, my, my initial thought is I would use my Instagram stories or a gallery post where I could go screenshot or screen grab the initial thing, circle it on a story and say, tap to the next to see what happened. Uh, yeah. And they go to the next and then I see the quote and maybe there's a little video because like you can actually overlay your own face talking on a story. So you have like that little 
poof cloud in the sky person talking kind of saying here's what they said and then do another one have fun with it yeah depending upon your personality you may just kind of have fun right right Um, and for the fact again i'm going to go back to what i said there normally economists don't speak this way and that's just a you know a byproduct of how enthusiastic they are uh housing yeah 100 So you're about to show a a quote from one of my favorites, good old Ivy Zellman. Absolutely. Yeah. So Ivy came out in in their broker survey and said, whether in terms of pending contract activity or our proprietary buyer demand ratings, the various measures of demand captured in this this month's survey can only be described as shockingly strong. We used that before in spite of the resurgence of COVID-19 cases. And and I think this is you know, really made true by what Quicken Loans said here. The pandemic has not stopped the consistent home price growth we've witnessed in recent years. So can I can home I prices that? are growing, but go ahead. This only supports what you were saying earlier, which is never has home been more important than it is right, right now to folks. Yep. Right. Never. Yeah. yeah. All my friends out there know, hey, the the line, are you living in your dream home now? Are you living in your dream home now, right? And if not, what are your plans? I mean, the reality is none of us know when this is going to end, but we're all seeing this massive flight to people that want a backyard, more space, a second office, a home office, a little more land. They they want a little more peace. I'm talking to people that are running publicly traded companies that are saying, we're probably not going to have our workforce come back until mid to late 2021, so if we're going to stay in a work from home environment, where you live matters. Matters, right? I, and I would go back to in the last segment where we talked about like the restaurants you went to, for example, Tom. Yes, I think this is actually an opportunity now potentially for agents to get back to interviewing restaurant owners, talking about what they're right. doing, putting it in their email newsletters. Hey, here's how so and so is doing this, this, and this, and really just kind of spreading the word of people's resourcefulness right. in a very indirect way, but showing it how it's being done. Cause I think that inspires people to think, you know what life, life is going on every second of every day. How am I going to be doing this? How am I living? What choices am I making today? Right. Just a thought. Jason, I think that's so important. You know, I, this, this economic downturn and what we're seeing just economically speaking, even back to the restaurant example is being defined by innovation, whether it's in our business, it's in another business. And think about too, think about how much we can help a restaurant to say, Hey, we are out there. We are doing this. Here's how we're doing it safely uh, because we know they've been hit hard. Um, but I, I love that idea. Yeah. So let's uh, let's show them that next slide because this next slide is very powerful. Yeah. So I, I go back to this. You know, Tom, this is the the large range of projections on future home prices. The one thing missing here, if you remember last time we talked about this, CoreLogic had projected six point six depreciation. Yep. You remember that red bar that, that yep. was hanging down to the right. Uh, they've come back and massively revised that to say we think it's, you know, it's 1%. Um, Fannie Mae, if you remember, Tom, when we first started talking about this, point, said 0.4%. Point yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've come back and said 0.4. So I think, you know, across the board, what we've seen is we've seen more, uh, you know, forecasters upgrade their projections going into end of the next year. That is the story right here. We still have a couple, you know, uh, seven out of the, the nine here are saying we're going to see positive appreciation. We have core logic now and, and, and truthfully um, respect those organizations, but don't agree with that based on the supply and demand situation we've talked extensively about. But, but I do find it interesting that, that across the board, they've been revised up over the last several weeks. Again, my friends that are watching, you know, mykcm.com forward slash Tom Ferry, go back into the archives of May and June. I mean, I think even the beginning of July, David, when they were still saying it's going to go up 0.4 and now yeah, they're right. saying 4.4. Now, mm-hmm. again, that side-by-side comparison, I would still say, this is what they said. This is what they're saying now. But does that really matter? We're talking about your home. Right. We're talking about, right? And I would go back to the, you know, home ownership today means more than it's ever meant. So more that emotional side, but let's, let's keep going because this, the next couple slides really tells the story from a data standpoint as well. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I bring this in. We've talked about it. Purchase applications, the leading indicator of you know folks that have that have seen a home and now going out and applying for the financing of it. We've seen twelve straight weeks of year of year increases in uh, the number of people applying for mortgages. Certainly a healthy indicator in the market um, relative to activity and what people are doing. Now, Tom, you, you, you talked about this and I wanna bring it up um, in showing time here. And maybe we can, we, we can talk about this for a minute. Um, if you remember this, we've started this. It used to be a line graph. We converted it, our team converted it to a bar graph. And it shows showings relatively uh, relative to uh, January and how we started out the year. We started out the year extremely strong. We know we took this dip down in uh, in uh, March and April and the beginning of May, and then we've been uh, we've we, we've been you know climbing since then. Meaning you know we're above where we should be in showings uh, across the country. Now, interesting trend. Uh, for the last four weeks, we've started to see a decline in that trend of the number of people going out and scheduling a showing as measured by showing time. Now, a couple of things to, 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 that I would position there. Um, no doubt we're coming out of a summer where, where we've seen massive activity. We, we started talking early about, you know, summer is the spring market this year. And a lot of that activity got displaced into the summer. I, the questions that start to form in my mind is, are, have we gone through maybe some of the pent-up demand that was in the market relative to the people that got displaced in the spring? But 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 the best analogy I could give on this right now is if you're flying down the road in a sports car doing 90 miles an hour and you see a you know an officer up around the corner or somebody warns you and you slow down to 60, you feel like you're going a lot slower, but, but you're actually going the speed you need to be going. Let's position this and let's remember that if we do feel any of that in the coming weeks, we're still up uh, relative to the number of sh showings, but we've come out of a time where we've been massively up uh, in, in showings across this country. Yeah. And the key, my friends, remember, we're looking at, you know, um, I think it's three or four provinces in Canada yeah. and in just about every state in the U.S. So those are you, it's very important, I think, for everybody out there, especially those of you with, you know, you're taking lots of listings to constantly be looking at the national data and then your local data through your MLS with showingtime.com. Always making that connection between the two. The other interesting um, thing, Jason, I'm sure you caught this too. I keep looking at this, the massive spike here in purchase applications and the drop in, the drop in showings. But I coach 17 of the biggest CEOs in, the, you know, in real estate and they all said July was the biggest recorded sales month in the history of their company. And we're talking about some businesses that have been around for 80, 90, 20, 140 years. So yeah. I think everybody out there knows July was a bananas month. It was. Um, and I was, I was looking at Showing Time's data. They keep that graph online, their COVID-19 mm -hmm. year over year analysis. Yep. And we are, according to that, it's still up year over year sure. showing activity. And right. it's following a similar decline year over year. So last year it fell almost the same. I mean, I'm not the expert. That's not my wheel. I'm here for marketing, but just an observation uh, when I look at that. Yep, absolutely. Nonetheless, do you think, this is the question for you guys, I suppose. Do you think, I mean, we have limited inventory. Buyers are certainly competing. I, I think a lot of families are trying to figure out school right now. I sure. think that's sort of become a different interest. That's yeah. maybe not distracted, but it's become the more focal point for a lot of families to figure out. Right. So I think that contributes as well. No doubt. I, I, th I think the story there, Jason, and let me just take my own family as an example. There are a lot of situations right now where people go, I just don't know. I don't know. If, if, if I'm uncertain, that can, that can paralyze me in the decision-making process, right? I, 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 I don't know if my kids are going back to school. I don't know what the plan is. I may need, but, but Let's let's also put that into perspective. There are there are significantly more needs in a home today, given school. You know, we we looked at a survey yesterday that twelve of the fifteen largest school districts in this country are starting virtually, and that's indicative, I believe, of what the country is doing, largely starting virtually. And that story will play out this year into what that means, you know, month over month. Um, but I think I think you're right there, Jason. I think the important thing we have to keep in mind here. Is, is we may feel a little bit of that, but let's keep it in perspective that we're up still. Still up. Yes. Yes. Still up. I'm seeing a lot of people in the comments, guys, that are saying, 
you know, yes, I'm looking, Hey, I don't feel that in Seattle at all. Yeah. You know, like, we, you know, we're so busy. We don't know what to do with ourselves. And, and you know, I think Laura also said, and, oh, you know, we don't get the MLS uh, showing time data, but, but she knows the velocity of the marketplace, which, you know, I'm talking to my clients up in the Pacific Northwest. They're feeling the same. Yeah. Um, so I know we only have one or two more slides, David, but let's, let's, let's bring it home with some, some good news to them, especially around the mortgage side. And by the way, everyone out there, if you haven't refinanced your house, please refinance it. David, correct me if I'm wrong. We just hit the eighth time this year, a record right. low for interest rates. Correct. Right. Eighth so you, time in one year, we're only in August. Right. Right. You know, I think the, um, and that's, you know, we follow the Freddie Mac, uh, uh, survey there, and you can see it up here on your screen, 2.88, which was published on Thursday, uh, record low for the eighth time this year. Uh, the quote here, the resilience of the housing market continues as mortgage rates hit another all-time low, giving potential buyers more purchasing power and strengthening demand. We expect rates to stay low and continue to propel the purchase market forward. However, the main barrier to rising demand remains the lack of inventory especially for entry level homes. You know, this this right here, no doubt, uh, you know, Tom, we, we could talk forever on it. We, we talked so, you know, many weeks about the impact we have in our business on the economy, the average impact of a home sale. We're seeing that dramatically driven by the, the lowest cost of borrowing money we've seen in, in I think forever almost. And, uh, you know, I saw a study yesterday, the average home, buyer in this country right now has $32,000 in additional purchasing power due to the rate environment today. That's huge. We need to be talking about that um, yeah, and, and, and getting David, that out there. Say that again, please. <laughs> the average home buyer today has $32,000 in additional purchasing power due to the rate environment. $32,000 in additional buying power. Like that is a video in and of itself, my friends. Just to go back and look at some of the slides we've done where we've said, hey, interest rates here equals this, interest rates here equal this, interest mm -hmm. rates here, $32,000 in additional buying power. That's just a powerful statement to be made. I mean, Jason, I know you're seeing it with your clients. I'm seeing it with my clients. I'm seeing it with friends that I know that are buying houses right now. They're saying, wait a minute, instead of buying that $800,000 house, I can now buy you know, an $850,000 house and have the right. same payment. I mean, it's, it is really? remarkable what's happening, but let's land it with this. The challenge, my friends, is we need more listings. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking you directly into your eyes right now. What are you going to do in your local marketplace to solve that? At the summit this year, we're going to go through seven different listing attraction campaigns and not the traditional ones you're thinking about, not just working with your past clients in Sphere or your geographic farm or trying to convert the online lead, but tapping into what I'm referring to as the non-market, the non-market, right? The ones that no one else is thinking about, but I believe there's about, dare I say, 3 million listings to be had by the savviest of people just like you. So what are you gonna do differently? Right? More of the same is only going to get you more of the same. Right? You've got to add new sources, a different approach, change your tone, change your message, be more of the educator, and be willing to go on way more research phase seller meetings, way more of those, people that are thinking about it. And Jason, I'm, I'm just giving them a little rant here. And without a shadow of a doubt, if you have not figured out how you're going to help your seller and market this process, Hey, what we need to do is refi, pull some money out, do a HELOC. So you got a hundred thousand dollars so you can go and buy the next home and qualify and then sell it and pay it off and do all that stuff. So you're not writing these contingent offers that are stopping so many of you. We've got to think through the solutions and dare I say, slow down with sellers slow down, get out of the quick, put it in the MLS. Oh my God, instant sale. And then go into the, the mayhem of, oh God, prelim title report and this, and oh my God, what is it going to appraise? Do all of that in advance. Start marketing yourself as the only agent who can guarantee helping their clients only move once. I, and I think that. that's I'm the law. sell you for the highest price and you're only going to move once with my system. Jason? I was going to say like, that's the line right there. You just used it. Only move once. 
But I actually think that idea of slow down is a good language pattern because I would, I would bet that this hidden non-market that you refer to, that a lot of that angst is pretty much like, man, it's going to sell so fast. I don't know what we're going to buy. We're going to be in a more competitive space. I don't want to end up in a rental if I can even find a rental. And then what if, what if I can't find a house or I want to build or whatever? Slow down. Like if you can put that hand on the shoulder, figuratively speaking, and just say, let's slow down. Here's the process that we're going to walk you through. That's a powerful language pattern. And I was thinking about it from a marketing standpoint. I mean, really, is it an email? Is it a post on social? Is it a video? Is it a postcard? There's only so many marketing channels that it's going to be, but it's everything we're talking about here. And I think if you're going to get savvy and look for those hidden listings, you got to understand what's stopping sellers. Yeah. Tom, if I could share the thing you and I were talking about this morning, a um, bunch of my clients, we don't, what, we're just, we're hustling right now. We're asking the question right now, what are we going to do to find those, like Tom said, maybe 3 million listings out there that could be hidden. They're sort of in a static, frozen, don't know where to go mode. Uh, one thing we're doing is we're actually sending out like mailers and communications to our geographic farms, basically saying, hey, would you be a seller if you could find that perfect home? just asking the question. And we're basically saying, would you fill out a form? What are you looking for? What do you have that you'd want to sell? Just so we can get a sense of where people are at. And you're basically becoming an off-market matchmaker yeah. because I think that's what it takes right now. I agree. Again, you have to think differently. Another just listed and just sold card, my friends, is not going to get it done. You're getting lost in the sea of sameness. You've got to penetrate into their hearts and minds what their concerns are what their issues are. Do you have the right home for homeschooling? Think yeah. about that as a headline. And I think a headline is sell and only move once. Yeah. If that's a big old campaign. I'd have that on Google Display Network, email, social, sell and only move once. Yeah. Figure yeah. it out. How are you going to support that? What are your yeah. solutions to it? And look, there's, there's, you know, whether they take money out of their house to do it, you go to a company like Easy Knock. I think Home Light is now doing this. There's a lot of companies that are paying attention to this sort of bridge loan strategy to help position those buyers, right? Some of them will even buy the house, give them the cash and let them go out and buy their next home. And I know you have a client who's actually doing that as well. And it's not really scalable, but you know, I'm proud of Fred. Uh, yeah. All right. So as we, as we wrap up, um, Gentlemen, I want to say thank you always. David, the work that you guys do at KCM is so important. And, you know, whether it's 14, 15 weeks, the, the years that I have uh, supported you guys and appreciated you guys and asked you to please come on my shows and, and share, I just want you to know for myself and everybody at Fair International and our entire ecosystem of coaches and clients and friends live on Facebook, we are very grateful for the work that you're, you and the team do. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I, yeah, on behalf of the entire, it's 26 people, not just me, you know, that, that do this research, that consistently look at what do we need to be saying right now? And, you know, uh, Tom, I will pass that along and know that on our behalf that, you know, all of this information doesn't make an impact until great people, great agents yeah. across the country go out there and get the word out. And, you know, that, uh, I'm, I'm going to make the case, you know, we're a month out almost, I think, from, from the summit. Uh, we still have things going on this year, significant things uh, that we want to talk about relative to the election and why people are moving and data to support what's going on. And so our goal is to be that resource and, and, and be that element that you can go out there confidently and have those conversations. And, and David, the promise is at the summit, day two, you got a 30-minute session where you're going to talk about the most important messaging and data points around the election and then what to do after the election Absolutely. to make sure you're positioning your clients yeah. to win. So, you know, that's a, that's a whole 30-minute session. And our, in our point right the summit. buried in the data there, and I'll just kind of tease this out, that the yeah. key to winning in 2021 will be how well we finish this year and what we do in the fourth quarter, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, 100%. So Jason, I know you got coaching sessions. Uh, mm -hmm. I thank you always, my friend, for, uh, for joining us and offering your marketing insight and prowess. Um, let's wrap mm -hmm. it up, my friends. Hey, it's Friday. Do me a favor and text 10 people you know and ask them, are they living in their dream home now? And with everything happening in the world, have they had any thoughts of selling? Keep unlocking the frozen market. Keep finding the listings and slow down and help them make this process easier and better for them and for the buyer that's going to buy the property. 
That's the whole game in 2020 and beyond, my friends. So we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks, and then we'll see you in three weeks at the summit. Until then, remember your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your passion and execution, that's what rules. See you soon, everybody. Take care. See you.